So as I said earlier, uh, this is the last Mass of our year here in Holy Family, or this academic year anyway. So it's a, a Mass of great gratitude for us because uh, when we look back over the year, amazing things have happened. And this can actually happen to all of us or any of us. Uh, if, you, if we focus on what the next intention, what the next need is, if we're always kind of looking forward, which is it, it's good to a degree to look forward, uh, not to be too fixed on it, but we, we should look forward and plan things. But if we're so focused on that that we never actually have take the opportunity to look back in gratitude, we can, we can miss so much of the picture. Like, when we look back and say, I prayed for this intention, and I got it. And I prayed for the most beautiful wife in the whole wide world, and I got her. And I prayed for wonderful children, and I prayed for this gift, and I prayed for a job, and I prayed for all these things, and I got them. If, if we never take stock of, of what the Lord has actually done in our lives, then we'd be so focused on, on what the next need, the next intention, the next problem, the next issue is, that we're almost kind of desperately kind of clinging, grasping uh, at the Lord rather than recognizing you are my father and you have a really good track record in my life, you know? So when we look back at how the Lord has blessed us and so many things that we have been given and so many unmerited, just plain gifts that he has given us, you know? And to take stock of that is absolutely so important. Uh, as I say, otherwise we, we, we may not see him anymore as a, as a generous father, but rather as a, a last resort, a portal last resort. If, if nothing else works, if I can't fix it, and no one around me can fix it, then, then go to God. But that's not really seeing him as a father. That's seeing him as a safety net or an insurance policy, uh, but not as, not as, a, not as a, a living person. So it's very healthy spiritually to look back and say, my goodness, the Lord has worked in my life. One of the ways that we do that, one of the ways that we help ourselves do that here is at the beginning of the year, the young people write themselves a letter saying, dear me. It sounds very strange when they write it, but it, trust me, it works. Uh, so dear, dear me, or dear future me, some, some of the smarter kids might say, dear future me. Um, and then they write what they, what they want from the year. So how, how, how they're getting on, where, kind of where they are and where they'd like to be. And they got those letters back yesterday, day before, day before, yesterday, whatever, within two, the time moves really quickly here, uh, either yesterday or the day before. They got them back and they read them. So at the beginning of the year, I was struggling with this. And look, I'm not struggling with this anymore. At the beginning of the year, I wanted this, that, and that, and I got them. At the beginning of the year, I had an issue with this. That's still there. Good. We've got some more work to do. So, but it's just, it's, it's very interesting for us to actually have a, a kind of a way of, of checking if, if we've grown, if we've developed, if we've healed. Uh, and it's, I think it's so healthy in the spiritual life to, as I say, recognize where God has worked and give thanks to him for it. I remember uh, after I got my driving license, uh, I was eight, 19, 18, um, it allowed myself and my friends from home to socialize in establishments outside of our local Town. So it allowed us to go to other places, to, to pubs and clubs and parties. Uh, so it was great because, uh, you know, we'd been out in Thurlis for years. Uh, so it was just great to, to go to other places and see what, what other pubs and clubs looked like. And so I remember, actually, this is uh, strange how these things kind of come full circle. Uh, but one night we, we decided to come out to Clonmel here, relatively close to here. And uh, so we were in... I can't even remember what the club was called now. Anyway, um, but it was uh, obviously a whole new, peop new people, new DJ, same music, um, and so on. And, but I remember there was this one point in the night, right, where like, I should have been riding the crest of this wave. Like, this, was, this was it. I was, I, was living the I was living the dream, right? I was living the dream, uh, pubbing, clubbing, and partying all over the shop. And I remember there was this one point in the night where um, it was like, it was like everything kind of paused, and I was able to just kind of step back from the situation for a second, just look around. And I just thought to myself, is this as good as it gets? Do you mean, is, is, this, is this it like? Is this, is this everything? Um, is, is this what the world has to offer? Like, is this, <laughs> is this it? And it was an interesting reality. It was an interesting kind of a reality check. Because I thought, well, I mean, it's grand. I mean, it's, I'll, I mean, I, I'm enjoying myself, but, but is, this, is, is this it? 
is there anything, is there anything more, is there anything kind of more substantial or, or meaningful? Because while this is fun, you can't live for this. Like there's, there's got to be something more, you know, it's, these, 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 are, these are things like entertainment can't be the goal of our life. These, these are things that are kind of on the periphery, that kind of, you know, give a, the life a little salt. You know what I mean? A nice little meal with someone you love or a holiday. Like, you don't live for these things, but they're, they're nice. They're, they're good little additions to our lives, fine, but they can't be the center of it. They can't be the meaning of it. So maybe I was feeling a little philosophical in my 19-year-old self, but I remember just looking around going, what is the meaning of life? <laughs> is this... Is this it like? And uh, I have no doubt that uh, one thing which really, really helped me not get swallowed by that lifestyle was the regular prayer in our family. Uh, a, a good friend of ours, it must have been back in the 80s, mid 80s sometime, he gave my dear mama a book about Garabandal. I still remember the cover of it. It was, it was a, a green, a green book, book about yay, yay big, uh, and a, an awful looking green cover on it. Uh, so my mom read this anyway, and it scared the bejapers out of her. For those who aren't Irish, it scared her intensely. And um, she thought, well, my goodness, we better start praying. So we started praying the family rosary in, 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 in our family. And this began to change things, because then obviously now we have a prayer life outside of, of Sunday Mass a prayer life that we actually brought home, you know, so a, a, a lived prayer life. And even though when I went to college then, I was no saint, I couldn't not pray. There was, it, it, was, it was so rooted in me, I, 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 I couldn't not pray, even though definitely, praying definitely amplified my conscience to recognize that maybe some things, uh, these are a bit out of line. Don't do that, don't go there, these people, maybe not. You know, the, my con conscience was definitely amplified. You, I mean, you just become much more aware of, that's not good. Um, and even when I was in UCC, in Cork, in University College Cork, UCC, uh, there's a Poor Clare's Adoration Chapel just beside the, the, the campus there. So even when I was a bit wayward, I, I couldn't not call in there every now and again. It just felt bad just ignoring Jesus like so so I you know I pop in every now and again and again it kind of it was, it was kind of this I wouldn't say love hate relationship but it was just you call in you know, you know say, hi Jesus I know there are certain things I shouldn't be doing um sorry about that I'm working on it okay it's it's a it's a it's a job in progress I'm 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 I, I'm getting to it okay and and it was just very interesting to see how how the effect that this one person had 15 years previously, giving a book to my mom affected my family, affected me, okay? And that man then, he, he became quite ill. His name is Pat. And uh, he became quite ill a good while ago now, maybe 15 years ago or more. And, uh, and he passed away only two weeks ago. But his action of giving a book to my mom, which then affected my family, which then affected me, which then helped me get to priesthood, which then helped me with others start a place like this, Holy Family. Do you know, it, it could all be traced back to that one action. Do you want this book? Like the effect that we have on other people and the effect that the people we affect can have on others is quite incredible when we think about it. You know, when you look back on your life, the people who've touched your life, they may not have been necessarily figures who were present for very long. They may have been a teacher who taught you for a year, who just really brought something out of you. There may have been a, a, an uncle or an aunt that you saw, maybe not so frequently, but just really inspired you, a, a grandparent or a, a priest or a religion teacher, who knows what. Someone who just touched your life, and it may not have been, as I say, for a, for a long period, but this, they just may have just gone into the heart and showed you what life is like. Jesus says to us, I've come that you may have life and have it to the full. He doesn't say I've come that you may have wealth and have loads of it, or I've come that you may have health and have it forever. But he says that he's come to give us life. Because life is actually much more than wealth, and life is even more than health. Because these things will, will eventually fail, all of them. 
But li life, life is much more than, than how fast you can run and how much you can lift and how physically fit you are. Life is way more than that. You know, I mean, I've met people uh, who are bedridden, far more alive than, than, than young people. Do you know, like there are certain young people I know who 18, 19 year, year, years of age, in the prime of their lives, apparently, who don't want to live. And you have 90-year-olds, right, bedridden, who love every morning that they have another day to, to contact their grandchildren. And how does this face, face time, is it? Facebook. Face what? <laughs> and, and they love it. Like, they, they love keeping in contact with the family. They are so, at 90, they are so alive. Because they have, they have something deeper. They have this, this, this uh, like a, a life that, that, that wells up from within. A God-given life. Which is so much more than, than just the health of, of one's body. So when God wants to give us life, he wants to give it to the, to, to the full. And it, it's, it, this is way, so much, uh, it, this is such a, a much greater gift than we could ever understand or imagine. Because he wants then to, to live this life here, despite maybe not having the most perfect or healthier bodies. Despite not having nothing but good experiences, because that won't happen. But that we have life here, and then life for all eternity. This is, this, is the, this is the goal, this is the plan. It's what he wants for us. And, and we're, we're, part of, we're, we're part of that. Like our, our young people here, you are now part of that. And your example, your words, your behavior will affect other people. And the people, the people you affect will affect other people. So there's just an incredible responsibility placed in our hands. When we're being given the gift of, the gift of faith, like this is, it, it's, this is, there is no greater treasure and no greater responsibility, none, because nothing else we do lasts for eternity, nothing. No matter how many buildings you build or money you earn, it means nothing. I, but saving souls, getting people to heaven, there is nothing more important than that. And lay people can do it, family fathers, family mothers, priests, religious, we can all do it. You don't have to have a collar to do that. Anyone can do it. All of you not only can, all of you are actually called to do that. In virtue of our baptism, all of us are called to do that, to, to, to be missionary. All of us are sent out. Dare I say, like lambs among wolves, all of us have this responsibility. Go make disciples of all the nations. So Jesus says to us, go make disciples of all the nations. So we have to make disciples, people who, who love the Lord. This is, this is our job. That's what we're here for. That those we speak to will love the Lord more because we've spoken to them. And that, doesn't, that, that doesn't mean that we have to speak about Jesus. Please don't. And not all the time. Do sometimes. Not always. Good morning. You know Jesus loves you? Yeah, whatever. It's six in the morning. Just let me sleep. <laughs> Like, you know, we can be tactful and be normal as well. But even that being normal, see, <laughs> what, what defines normal? When, when I have a lived relationship with the Lord, it, my normal becomes different. Because normal for the world might mean that you curse and swear and do, do these things that we're not supposed to be doing. That might be normal out there. That's not normal for us. Normal still means you can still have fun. You can still have a, a, a good night out with friends and enjoy, you know, a good meal. You can still have like a, you know, a good bottle of wine between six people um, you know, and some expensive uh, dark chocolate that you just shave and you have little shavings on, what do you eat? On strawberries. Yeah, dark chocolate and strawberries with your wine. You know what I mean? And make a nice snobby evening of it. Like, you can do those kind of things. There's no pro These things aren't sinful. There's no problem. Enjoy life. Please do. But life is so much more than those as well. You see, it's like we're just getting this balance right. What it means to live life and love life. But to live a life in the Lord, with the Lord, with the Lord, it's, it's such, such a gift. It's so, it's so freeing. In our, in our gospel, uh, Jairus' daughter, she's 12 years of age. These numbers are significant. Uh, 12 years, 12, the word number 12 uh, in, in biblical terms was always like a number of fullness. So the way that we'd say um, he's driving 100 mile an hour, right? 100, like, you know, you're a millionaire. No one kind of, there's no kind of badge for being an 800,000 heir. It's, it's a substantial sum, but like it's a millionaire. We like the zeros, you know what I mean? 
so the same kind of idea, Tw 12 was one of those numbers for them. It was a number of kind of fullness, right? So 12 years of age, she's in kind of the prime of her life as such. 12 years of age, things started a lot earlier back in the day. Uh, so 12 years of age, and she has actually passed away. There's a woman with a hemorrhage who has suffered for 12 years under it. So again, like, uh, the, the idea is she's suffered for an awful long time, like for a, a huge chunk of her life in physical pain, Ill, physical illness. So what does the Lord do? The Lord comes into both of their lives and gives them their lives back. He gives them life. Quite literally, in, in Jairus' daughter's case, he raises her from the dead. And in the, the woman with the hemorrhage, he gives her her life back. So the, the, the pain that she had gone, the physical pain that she had gone through, uh, the, 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 all of her money spent on, on various doctors and to no avail, all, all of that now is, is, is repaired. And she has life. And faith. And life to the full. And as the Lord says to her, your faith has restored you to health. Go in peace. Go in peace and be freed of your complaint. This is, this is just beautiful words, beautiful words from the mouth of the Lord. Just one last idea, or thought for today. When we come to the Lord, as I said earlier, we may do so with a, a kind of a sense of, of desperation, maybe even a sense of fear. Uh, I don't know what the future holds. I don't know what next year holds. I don't know if the test results that I'm waiting for are, I don't know which way, I don't know, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know which way they're going to go. Uh, financially, COVID, I don't, know what this, I don't know what the future holds. And so we can look at all these things with fear and say, I just, I just keep my head down and just try not to be seen and, and we'll do our best. <clears throat> Good Lord says to us today, do not be afraid. Only have faith. Do not be afraid. Only have faith. We're being sent out on a mission. A mission to bring the light of the world into the world. A mission to bring taste, salt, back into our, our lives and into the, the, the lives of, of those around us. We're called to renew the face of the earth through the, the work of the Holy Spirit within us. There is no greater gift, but we should do this with, without fear, because we have nothing to be afraid of. Because what can they take from us? If we die, well, I know where I'm going. I know where I want to go. I know where I'm trying to go. I know where I hope I'll get to. What can they take from me? If they steal my car, I'll get something smaller. Grand. If the house burns down, sure. hopefully there's insurance for that. I don't know. What can they take from me? If uh, my reputation is shot, well, that would hurt, but I'm sure the Lord will have a pur purpose for it. What can they take from me? I have nothing to fear. When, when we have the Lord, we have nothing to fear. Do not be afraid. Only have faith, because in this mission, we are never, ever alone. In our lives, in our problems, in our crosses, in our, in our sickness, even in our death, we are never alone. We have the Lord at our side, we have the Holy Spirit living within us, and we have a Father who wants to call us home. And once we get in the doors of those pearly gates, everything will make sense, because it's like here on earth, we're kind of in exile, we're where we're trying to make the best of, of a bad situation here on earth. But when we get into heaven, it'll all suddenly make sense. This is where we belong. This is where we'll find peace. This is where our souls will finally be at rest. And this is the goal of everything we do here. So do not be afraid. Only have faith. Amen.